If this next movement we are about to discuss gets off the ground, things could get even worse for the Liberal Party, not just in New South Wales, but federally too, all over the country, in fact. We know there's an identity crisis. We know the base is disenchanted. We know there's generational change. And yes, we know there's an issue with women. There's a real opportunity here for someone to swoop in, isn't there? For a political party or group of conservative independents that might reinvigorate those who have lost faith. I don't know if this is it, but I'm fascinated to find out. Matthew Kamenzuli is the man behind Choice 200, a play, of course, on Climate 200, which produced the Teals. He says this will be a collective of frustrated true liberals who believe their former party of choice has lost its way. They are planning on contesting a number of seats in next year's New South Wales state election, including that of leader Dom Perrottet. Matthew joins me now. Matthew, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you. Are you serious here or are you just trying to stir up trouble? Oh, mate, absolutely serious. Of course we're serious. Yeah, I mean, the, the party's certainly uh, lost its way and uh, nothing is, is, is stronger evidence than that than, than the fact that pre-selections still haven't happened and lessons weren't learned from the last, uh, the last, uh, the last time around at the federal election. So I'm, I'm, I'm bitterly disappointed by that and, yeah, deadly serious. What is your biggest gripe with what the Liberals are doing at the moment? Look, the biggest issue right now is the fact that the members, 66 percent over, over, I think it was over two thirds actually, um, voted for democratic selections um, in the in the Rose Hill uh, sort of uh, uh, forum that we had. I remember um, that well. And yeah. you, your dad was a big part of that. Um, yeah. And he did a great job and played a great part and led that out from the front. And what's really important, I think, is that uh, you know. The party needs to learn the lessons from the federal election, that if you don't listen to the members, you're not listening to the people who represent the community to the party, you're not listening to the voters. And it's really important that the party selects candidates in a democratic way so they can advocate for the policies that matter to the communities and the electorates that they come from. And that's what this is all about. What platform will you run on? Well, the, 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 the Choice 200 concept is, is really one to essentially get back to where the Liberal Party started. Um, it's about small government. Um, it's about the issues that matter to, to middle Australia, to, to, to you and me, to all of us. Um, things like the cost of living, um, cost of housing, starting to become big concerns, and obviously uh, energy security. Things that really matter to, to me and you and ordinary Australians, normal people. It's hard to find good candidates. Do you have any already locked in? We're talking to a lot of people at the moment. Uh -huh. um, we're also wanting to see how this selection process goes uh, with, with, with the party. I mean, I don't really uh, uh, feel like I really want to be doing this. I mean, I love the Liberal Party, but if, it, if it's going to lose its way and it's going to continue down the path that it's on, there are a lot of frustrated Liberals, as I said, uh, and as you said, and there are a lot of uh, people that, that I think might want to have a go this way as well. So I want to keep some options open there, but certainly talking to a lot of people and some pretty prominent people as well. When you say prominent people, are we talking athletes, celebrities, former journalists? Like, g give us some a, indication. A, a broad variety um, and, and also just great everyday Australians that do really important work. How many frustrated Liberals do you think exist? Well, well I mean, all the people who voted for democratic reform which is a good, you know, two thirds of the party. I think it's growing. I think I think more, um, and I, I think the, the public expects better as well. I think everybody just expects that, you know, the Liberal Party, Liberal supporters, very upset, very disenfranchised, and that's going to have electoral impact. So I really hope they're listening. Why now? Well, the elections are only coming up in March, so we don't have a great deal of time, and there comes a time when you just have to start to do these sorts of things. So now is the time, because. I think in order for the party to put the sort of people up that, that we need to see, they have a window of time, and if they don't do it, then I think we just have to. Are you hoping in some way, because you've been very successful in business, you're a wealthy man, you don't need to do this. This is a lot of work. This will be exhausting. You clearly care. Are you hoping in some way that this might push the Liberals into some kind of action? Is there a small part of you that hopes that they might so that you don't have to do this? I mean, I'm formerly on state executive, I know there are some really good people on that executive. There really are. And they're, they're pushing for that. Um, I, I, I hope. I hope so. I mean, I, I love the country. That's why I'm here. $7,000, I think, is a maximum that you yeah. can donate. Yeah. How will you fund this? Well, it's not just me 
um, um, funding this. Of course, I mean, there, there are caps. Um, and uh, I think there are a lot of people, a lot of people that are very, very upset. Um, and I'm talking to a number of other people like me, self-made people who've worked very, very hard, lived the, you know, the, the, the Menzies dream, as it were. Yeah. And um, they're just as keen to see the, you know, sort of good quality candidates and the good sort of policies um, being advocated for. And they're coming on board. And I think there'll also be a grassroots element as well, once we fly the flag. So if this eventuates and you have success in New South Wales, will you then try to implement this at a federal level? <sighs> Look, I mean, I know that Peter Dutton um, made commitments uh, to the, the, the Liberal Party. Um, I believe that Peter Dutton intends to ensure that pre-selections happen. I trust him at his word. Um, and I really hope we don't have to do this again. But if, you know, if we have to, we will. What motivates you? You say you love this country. Yeah. That um, in itself? Look, I mean, I grew up, <clears throat> I, I, I grew up in, uh, in, in a suburb called Grey States in, in, in Western Sydney. I built this little software company that's become a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a success story. Um, I, I built that uh, through, through hard work. Um, and um, you know, I think that everybody should have that opportunity. I'm, I'm saddened by the fact that, you know, when you talk to young people at the moment, um, many of them don't even have an aspiration to buy a home because they just feel like it's out of reach. And that's just wrong. I, I, I think we need to start to really look at the sorts of policies that would, would, would put us in good stead for the youth to be invigorated and motivated and, and, and just, you know, get along. OK, well, Matt Camanzulli, we will absolutely watch with interest. I think you're planning on running a candidate in Dom Perrottet's seat as well, so we'll watch that with much more interest uh, than all the others. We thank you so much for your time and good luck. Sure, thank you.